The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, has discovered two more rehabilitation centers in Zaria Kaduna State from where it rescued 11 inmates. This is coming barely two days after the state governor, Nasser El Rufai, led the police to raid a center where 147 inmates were rescued from, again, a rehabilitation center in Rigasa. Mainly men and children between the ages of 11 and 40 rescued in the two centers located in Limanchi, Kona, and Ma Mara, Kaduna State. Stay with me in the studio are Dami Adebayo, thank yeah. you very much, and Lester Wilkos, thank you very much thank for you. staying with us. Mm. We just had to have this conversation because yeah. it's like it's one too many. Yeah. In the space of one month, we've had more than three centers, you know, uh, being um, invaded by the police. Yes. Yes. What they they, these places are not new. They thrived for years yes. before this happened. What's your reaction to this? I, I want unveiling? to say kudos to Governor Erofai for taking, holding the bull by the horn, taking the bull by the horn to confront the age-long uh, tradition in, in, in most part of northern Nigeria, the Amajiri and the all these Islamic centers that hitherto their activities are shady, like this now. Because my government is saying that by next year, 2020, the Amajari system in um, Kaduna State will be abolished totally in Kaduna State. This is what nobody has been able to do, because it is embedded in religion. You see, something about we must know in this country is how sensitive religion is. And I really uh, 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 try to be careful. Uh, if I didn't be a Muslim, I would have talked more about this because this is an Islamic religion. But as a Christian, I will not delve too much into uh, what I cannot justify. Yeah, let's talk about fully. the. So yeah. it is. So this, these things are embedded in, 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 in the religious practices and religious cultural practices in the north. And so these centers are all there, have all been there. But I think the government is moving against them because most times you discover that they are inhuman, they are treated inhumanly, they are not. They are not uh, psychiatric center. Most of them. Do you think there are more? There are no, more no, centers. There like are that. more. There are far more centers. That is, there are far more centers. There are far more centers. And that's why I said I want to give kudos to Governor Erufai. He's somebody that um, he's not my best of uh, persons. Uh, I have gross against him. But in terms of administration, I think Governor Erufai is standing out. So in so many hard and unpopular decisions, especially as it affects his people. You know, to, I mean, we are going to say by 2020, the emergency system of education, whatever in Canada, will be totally abolished. It's going to work. Again. It's going to, it's going to come in, come in conflict with certain instituted authorities there. Somebody tried. To, I mean, Sanusi said it in Kano. He was just by mere statement. He was almost booted out of his uh, emirship. So, but. Governor Erufai is seen himself as somebody that should reform certain practices, which I think um, there are certain, certain practices of the 18th century, 60s, even in the 80s and the 70s, that in this 21st century must give way to something more rational. Couldn't, couldn't agree more with Lesnar as well. I think, um, Jenna, um, it probably shows a failure in the way our state is functioned as well. The fact that, you know, we can allow religious and cultural considerations to overcome basic human rights as well. Um, there's no excuse for this. I've seen a lot of arguments go like, oh, they basically function as remand homes. I'm like, again, they're not state registered remand homes or federal government registered remand homes as well. So they plain and simply just shouldn't exist and the abuse that goes on, you know, shouldn't be allowed to go on. Um, but going forward as well, it's, you know, all well and good if you're going to bear the might of the law on this, but there needs to be a campaign to win hearts and minds as well of people and to convince, you know, as many people that, look, there are better ways, you know, forward towards education that you could be pious and still not, you know. Yeah, they, um, you, you guys are leaning towards the education um, side, but this I, is not to educate. This is to people, they say, have mental issues and the, the families are taking them there mm -hmm. to get some sort of help so that they can get well. Mm -hmm. The operators have come up to say that these families bring them mm -hmm. willingly, you know. So that's, uh, I'd like us to look at that. They were also, the, um, the, the torture there did not stop 
respond only on the physical of being chained. Mm -hmm. You had sexual harassment mm -hmm. even between the uh, male, male, female, male, mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah, like, like I said as well, that it's possibly still a fail failure of education on the part of people taking them there as well. Because I, I can't possibly see myself, you know, taking someone that I love to um, a center where I just can't see any outs, but I haven't seen anyone being reformed. And then, you know, the fact that, I mean, if you could visit people and you saw that they looked like that, then I'm pretty sure that, you know, you would have a rethink as well about why you're putting someone that you, you know, supposedly care about. So I think, um, again, unfortunately, it does feed back to this as well. It does feed back to the education angle. It does feed back to law and order as well. And it does feed back to the fact that, you know, that we should do better as humans as well. And we shouldn't be afraid to call out, you know, what this is as well. It's disgusting. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. And you know, for every time that these things happen as well, or every time that we discover that these things happen as well, we should make a commitment to us as people in society, and then the people that we have also in authority as well, to make sure that this never happens again. Yeah, before we go to the authorities, let's go back to the family. Because mm -hmm. these people did not get there at the instance of the government. It is mm -hmm. loved ones, like you mentioned, that took them there mm -hmm. because they felt that they are going <coughs> to get help. No. It, this, this, these places are thriving because they are getting customers, let me put, use that word, they are getting people to come in to patronize them. Mm -hmm. And these are the families. What do you say about families who would willingly put their loved one in the care of people who will put them in chains and try to whip out the devil from them? That's, that's, what, he has, that's what he has just said. If, if you're educated and you, are, you have rationality running in... Well, we don't have too many education no. around. Nigeria is not Nigeria. Nigeria is about sixty-eight percent educated. Illiterate. Oh, that reminds me. That reminds me. One of the first batch of people that were rescued, one had a PhD. Yeah, good. So what he I'm was rescued, but no, he was so, there. So yeah. in that so, no, what I'm saying in a sense is this: these are embedded in religion and culture and culture, because the man you're taking them to is maybe an alpha, somebody that has a that has. Because not, let's also face it: not only in the Islamic world, you find this thing. Even part, even down south, you find some places where things like this are done. So it is because somebody believes that he can have some spiritual uh, resolve and his prob uh, solving of his problem or that of his love. Why are we leaning uh, towards that area so much when we have more sophisticated yeah, uh, medical? That, no, 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 yeah, because it is it is it is habits. Okay, oh, uh, 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 habits. All oh, habits die hard. And then you've not seen results. That's what I'm saying. If you have rationality, you've not seen results. And then you go to a place, you find your loved one being tied and sexually abused. The man is abusing sexually. And you say the man and you say the man is mentally deranged and you're abusing him. Then something's wrong with you. <laughs> with you that is even running the home. So maybe you should be changed. <laughs> so you need to be changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. That means there's something wrong with the entire system. And like I said, I'm not blaming the authorities. There are uh, uh, there are hospitals, you might say it's not enough, but I think the best place to get help is a registered facility, registered medical facility. Yeah, we might not have enough. We might, you know, the next thing we say, oh, because the government didn't provide hospitals, I pull two to alternative uh, list. But even if you choose alternatives and you discover that your loved ones or the person you are taking there is not getting better, and rather it's been abused. And then there is evidence of these things happening. And then the next person will still take his person in there. No, no, no evidence of results mm -hmm. that, okay, uh, Mr. Lagbaja was taken there and he's back okay. and he's well and everything is fine. There's no evidence. Yeah. And beyond, so keep doing that. Yeah, beyond commendation for the government, uh, President Buhari coming up to say, um, I condemn this. Um, instance, that, um, this uh, situation where human rights is being truncated and commended the government of Kaduna State for the effort that they, beyond this commendation, what other actions do you think that the government can take? Apparently, we have more of these sort of rehabilitation centers, in quote, up not. What further action do you expect to see from the government, federal government, not just the Kaduna State government? Um, every child is born, you know. I mean, you're born somewhere and something, and you, you know, ideally should have a birth certificate if you're more learned as well. There's no reason why the state shouldn't be able to track where every child is at every given time, you know. So you're with your parents or you're in school, and when you drop off the system, then, you know, this is when social services or, you know, um, intervention should happen. Now, this is a lapse, really, because, you know, for children aged 11 and 3 to be somewhere for years and no one, you know, 
has, you know, from the state has gone to say, oh, where's this child? Is this child dead? Is there a death certificate? And none of this has happened as well. It's a massive failure on our part. So um, I think, first of all, it's the fact that, you know, every Nigerian anyway, you should have an idea or be able to track a certain individual if they fall off the grid. So if a child is not in school, you should be able to find out. We are talking like you live in an and, advanced and, and, but country. That's the, but that's the thing we don't well. even know the number of, of people that, that, that live in this but country. But, but again, as so well. How, how practical <laughs> would that be? I, will just to, I just had one news that we are 2, two million, but I just, I, I just shook my head. We don't I, know. I, I just shook my head. You see, the truth of the matter is, let's not say uh, Abuja can do nothing because Abuja can only enact national laws, protection of human rights. But those laws have to be domesticated by states. You know, we're talking about autonomy. States are autonomous in their own right. And there are a lot of constitutional because first and foremost, you belong to a state before belonging to the federation. If you are born into a state, okay, so um, the federal can only do a broad-based law in terms of human rights, in terms of condemnation. But this has to be domesticated by the state. Remember the Child Rights Act that was passed by 2007, I think in 2003 or 2002, I can't remember, has not been domesticated in most states. That's why they not. I mean, so the question is why? That means those people, the governors of those states or the, whatever the opinion is, do not see it as something, because there's no way the federal government will come from Abuja to come and uh, ask for where is X, Y, Z, your state. It's, it's your state responsibility. Education is education, primary, secondary, it's your state responsibility. Um, health, primary health care, Secondary health care is your, is your responsibility. The federal government only has tertiary, that is the teaching hospitals and all whatnot. So it is your responsibility. So the states must come up, must live up to their billing. In the north, there are some things, yes. In the north, there are some things that need to give way. Yes, there are some that need to give way. Because really and truly, we are in the 21st century. So some of these practices just need to give way. And that's why I keep commending Governor Erufai and I wish him well and I pray that he continues in this path. And let the people of Canada say support him so that some of these vices will be rooted. Perpetrators, before we wrap this up, the operators of these um, rehabilitation centers, they've come up in their defense to say, they, I didn't ask them, they brought their people to me to come and take care of the police say they are investigating and they're going to prosecute them. Do you see a conclusion and what sort of punishment would be the final outcome? Well, I'm not in the judiciary <laughs> as well. Um, but obviously, as you know, the um, as the Nigerian judiciary, the um, police would say, you know, prosecute to the full extent of the law. Really, you know, lay down the law. Do you see well. that happening? I think it's most likely going to uh, high profile cases. Like I said, to Nigeria, if you're high profile, it works. If you're not, it doesn't. So I think I think this might fall into the other one that is high profile. Um, hopefully, it does. If it doesn't, then obviously, it's a it's a shame on everyone as well. Well, because it's a Rufai state, I hope it will work. <laughs> but sincerely speaking, I do not see and I do not see conviction in the next, in the, in the nearest future. But I think there should be conviction to serve as a deterrent <laughs> to others. So that's, yes. Thank you very much, gentlemen, yes, it's always for coming pleasure on the anytime. program. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you too. We're not done though. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us. The minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbo Naya Onu, has assured that the ministry will ensure the growth of science and technology in the country. Dr. Onu said this to lawmakers in Abuja at the budget defense session of the ministry with members of the House Committee on Science and Technology. He stated that the federal government is committed to a 13-year roadmap aimed at improving the utilization of science and technology nationwide. Science, technology and innovation has contributed immensely to our economic growth. However, much more needs to be done. We're all aware that science and technology is the hub on which the development of any economy revolves. There's no sector of human endeavor that can progress or be said to develop without science and technology. For any country to pull itself out of being a developing or undeveloped country, such a country must pay attention not just to the Ministry of Science and Technology, but to ensure that the basic requisites of the economy are founded on local indigenous growth of the technology available in that country. Nigeria is seeking to achieve this goal by 2020. Economy depending entirely on commodities or resources to now depend on knowledge that is innovation driven. 
this is something that should have happened at independence, but we said it doesn't matter. If it didn't happen then, it has to happen now or sometime. And the, luckily, it's during our own time that we have been uh, working on this, and uh, you have also worked very hard with us, and this uh, is a product of the Federal Executive Council where all members of the council have made uh, contributions. I also want to mention that the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020 recognizes for the first time in the history of development planning in our country, recognizes uh, science, technology, and innovation as being at the center of economic activities uh, in the country. Kidnapping for ransom has become the most pervasive violent crime in this country, and it persists because the benefits seem to exceed the cost. For me, the obvious solution is not just to raise the cost, but ensure strict compliance, as in stiffer and harsher penalty, like life imprisonment. After all, the crime of kidnapping is an extreme threat that requires an equally extreme deterrence. Thank you for your attention tonight. It is a pleasure always to share this hour with you. Do join us again same time tomorrow. Until then, take care and God bless.